start some CNN or something like that, IPC, I don't know if they've got that much of funding. We can start an alternative news network to CNN and then, you know, meet the challenge of, uh, of showing the alternative viewpoint, our viewpoint, the truth in other words, of what's really happening in the various parts of the world. Perhaps we can do that. Um, maybe a bit of a problem getting together the cash. Um, but we don't need to do all those things. We can't do it if we, if we had the capacity and the capability to do it. Yes, wonderful thing, but we can't. So what are we going to do? Let us look at our own uh, uh, terrain. In other words, let us look after our own little turf in South Africa here. Let us do to the maximum what we can do to reverse this negative stereotyping of Muslims and um, the disinformation about the what's happening in the various troubled spots of the world. Let us concentrate here and do whatever we can in respect of reaching our fellow citizen. Now, we have two things in our favor. Firstly, we have a great deal of goodwill amongst our fellow citizens, those who are not Muslims. Great deal of goodwill because the people here can understand very clearly. They can empathize, they can relate the, to the oppressed people in other parts of the world because they were also oppressed um, in the recent past. And of course, many of them understand and acknowledge the role of the Arab countries in supporting the liberation movements, for example. And thirdly, many of them also acknowledge the role played by many Muslims in the liberation struggle. So, alhamdulillah, we have goodwill flowing out of that. And of course, uh, the situation is also favorable in terms of what's happening in the world, meaning that people can see very clearly the duplicity, the hypocrisy, the deceit of the world leaders, especially uh, Bush and Blair, who have been shown up to be liars quite clearly. And of course, Ariel Sharon has been shown up to be the thug that he really is. So people can see this very clearly now. So that is in our favor. We don't have to very work very hard to show these realities. But if we take this goodwill that is within this country for granted, the favorable impression, the goodwill, the support for the Palestinians and so on, the support for um, or, or the support for the anti-war movements. And if we take all these goodwill that we have in this country for granted, we may wake up one day and say, how did the situation turn so adversely against us? Because our adversaries in this country, our Kazis, they are working very hard. They are working very, very hard with great deal of resources, intellectual and financial resources, in order to change the, the goodwill that is here for us. They, they, they're working very hard behind the scenes. I don't want to go too much into that. For example, if you go to the Holocaust Museum, if you go museum, if you go through the one side and come out the other side, you can't help but be touched at the plight of, uh, you know, the, the people who suffered under the Holocaust, the Jews. And um, they're working very strongly in the schools. And the principals of the schools are ready to have some extracurricular activity if a speaker comes from abroad and say, look, we want to... Uh, do a presentation for an hour and a, or an hour and a half. Many principals are amenable to this because they want to introduce something different. So they will come in and these experts, so-called expert speakers, are coming in to show, for example, that Islamic fundamentalism is the threat to Africa and many such things and, and things about the Holocaust and, and about the Israeli-Palestinian issue. Experts, so-called experts, are coming in are brought in at great expense to go to all the schools and present this, uh, the, you know, the, the, a different perspective of the issues that we are familiar with. So, the question is, what are we doing? And Brother Faisal and uh, Brother Dawood also explained that um, we are doing very little, or nothing in fact, in respect of meeting these challenges. Um, Brother Faisal also spoke about the talk shows. Talk shows. Many of the radio stations have now turned into talk shows where you present the views, your views about issues. And these issues come up about Amin al Lawal and, uh, and Iraq and Palestine. On Friday morning, there was something on Palestine. And when I hear the presenter of the show, Vyombuli, or somebody else, uh, 
Dr. Modi says, saying that uh, we've got callers, we've got Jane from here, and we've got uh, Patrick from Cape Town, and we've got Imran from Durban. I just want to cringe. I just want to go under the table when I hear Imran is going to, or Mohammed is going to come on. Because usually what happens is that Imran will come on and say that, hey, y'all don't know what y'all doing, man. That land, that Palestine belongs to us. He says in our Quran, it belongs to us. And you know what? We're going to sort y'all out. We're going to send more suicide bombers to sort y'all out. Y'all see what's going to happen. We're going to take over the whole world. <laughs> it's high on emotional content and low on facts. Low on facts. Emotion, very high. So... <laughs> So these are some of the things that are happening on the on the radio station. Um, um, trying to find my place in this thing. I said not what it used to be. Um, I just want to finish off by saying that I'm very pleased. I'm very pleased, alhamdulillah, that you have decided, those who have graduated, that you have decided to take up this journalism cause and take it up so seriously. Uh, it may be a crash cause. It may be a crash cause, very brief cause, maybe just dealing with many issues on a very cursory, very superficial level. But I, I feel that it, it adequately equips you with skills, with the necessary skills to understand what's happening in, the, in, in terms of media and how to engage, with, more importantly, how to engage with the media, how to understand disinformation and propaganda and so on. Of course, this is only a foundation. Those who have taken the media course, this is your foundation, a very good foundation on which you need to build. You need to build because you need to understand issues like Palestine. You can't say that you may understand what is disinformation and so on and then go on to the radio stations or as a guest or as a caller into these programs. You need to build, you need to understand the issues, what is exactly the dynamics in these crisis zones. Your graduation today, your graduation today means that you are soldiers in a very crucial, in this very crucial battle for the hearts and minds of people. You are the new soldiers in this crucial battle. I feel it's very crucial in winning the hearts and minds of people. May Allah reward you for making this decision of taking this cause in journalism and moving on that path. For taking this cause in a very important jihad. It is a very important jihad. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen you as you do battle and embolden you with each victory that you manage to achieve, inshallah. For no particular reason now, I'm going to read to you something which I found very amusing. You may, found something, you may find something profound in that. You know, I started my speech by saying that I was thinking of something profound. Well, I'm going to read you something now. And maybe you'll find a profound lesson in it. Maybe you'll find nothing in it. But I hope you find some profound lesson in it. Like, for example, um, you know, the, the words can be more powerful than weapons. Maybe you'll find this in, it, in this article I'm going to read to you now. Or maybe you'll find something else profound. Like, uh, there's always a way to defeat an enemy, no matter how strong he is. So, um, I'll finish off by reading something from yesterday morning. I hope nobody read this. Uh, and I'm also very easily amused, so I hope you also. <laughs> it says here that um, a wealthy old woman goes on a photo safari in Africa. She takes a pet Dachshund. Is that the name of the dog? How you pronounce it? Dachshund, Dachshund right? Dachshund for company. He knows everything, that's what I could ask. And he's a journalist. <laughs> so she goes on the safari and she takes her pet Dachshund for company. One day the Dachshund starts, Dachshund is of course a little dog for those who don't know. Uh, one day the Dachshund starts chasing butterflies and before long discovers that he is lost. Then he notices a leopard heading rapidly in his direction with the obvious intention of having him for lunch. The Dachshund thinks, uh, Indian Dachshund by the way, so he says, hey, I'm in deep trouble now. <laughs> then he spots some bones on the ground close by and immediately settles down to chew on them with his back to the approaching cat. Just as the leopard is about to leap, the Dachshund exclaims loudly, hey man, that was one delicious leopard. 
I wonder if there are any more around here. Hearing this, the leopard skidded to a stop. A look of terror comes over him and he slinks away. Phew, this is also an Indian leopard. He says, that was close, man. That dashen nearly had me. Meanwhile, a monkey who has, who has been watching from a nearby tree reckons he can put this knowledge to good news and save it for protection from the leopard. So off he goes. But the dashen sees him and knows that he is up to no good. The monkey soon catches up with the leopard, spills the beans and strikes a deal with the leopard. The leopard is furious at being made a fool of and says, here monkey, hop onto my back and see what's going to happen to that conniving canine. Now the Dachshund is alarmed to see the leopard coming with the monkey on his back. But instead of running, the dog sits down with his back to his attackers, pretending he hasn't seen them. And just as they get close enough to hear the, the, the Dachshund says, Where is that damn monkey? I sent him off half an hour ago to bring me another leopard. <laughs> so the moral of the story is remember, if you can't, if you can't dazzle them with brilliance, baffle them with bull. Jazakallah for listening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Jazakallah, Mr. A.B. Daji, his own individual style is really nice and I think it just woke us all up in this little gathering. Jazakallah khair. Before we start the passing on our certificates, I, as I promised, will have Brother Tahir Satoto to come forward and give us a few thoughts that he has and about his perhaps Shay's uh, trip to America for his Fulbright scholarship, inshallah. I've heard Uncle Dawood Ngwane, I've heard Dr. Faisal, I've heard Brother... A.B. Dowji. A.B. Dowji. Uh, they've said profound things, and perhaps the freshest profound thing from A.B. himself was that uh, Muslim responses are quite often high on emotion, <laughs> low on facts. I thought that was very, very uh, profound. But I would, what I would like to re-emphasize is that in our attempt <laughs> to engage with the media, we also need to move away from the culture that is reactionary. We need to be proactive rather than being reactive. Uh, Muslim responses tend also to fail from realizing and understanding that part of the problem that confronts us is also caused by Muslims themselves. Some time ago, a sister who was graduating in this similar program said, there is no smoke without a fire. And the suggestion was that the media stereotyping of Muslims, <laughs> sometimes Muslims are responsible for that negative stereotyping of Muslims. And therefore, what is required is critical, bold journalism amongst Muslims that confront the Muslim House of Islam for the negative image that they have caused of Islam and Muslims. We cannot shun that responsibility and run away from that responsibility. By so doing, I think we will be adopting what I will phrase as a pro active a much more proactive stance in our engagement with the media. I will limit myself to those comments. I've been asked to comment about my going away. Uh, I'm not sure if there's anything to celebrate in my going away because as a close friend and colleague said, you are going into the belly of the beast. But also the news about the going away came about in a way that uh, I was not quite happy. I was confiding to an old 
teacher of mine who introduced me into Islam and taught me in the early days when we were still infants into Islam. And out of his own enthusiasm, <laughs> he spread the news all over the place uh, without my knowledge. But So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether um, I should beat the drum, so to speak, uh, because someone reminded me that you're actually going into the belly of the beast. But more than that, it is also about choosing a path of glorified poverty. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, we had a, a very good. We have great students. The students were of a very high quality, and this is the fourth journalism course that we had, and we are continually attracting um, quality students to to this course. And uh, we had uh, some 14 students, alhamdulillah, and uh, that's uh, on this uh, in, the, in, the, in the fourth course that we are going to be started today. We have about 10 or 12, but I do uh, I, I do believe that these are students who are very enthusiastic and passionate about studying uh, basic journalism. So without uh, further ado, I want to uh, call upon the Sister Aisha Mal to hand out the certificates. We would like to call upon 